Hey hi, this is Kribakaran Rajendran, founder of Algo Trading Firm Square of Bots.com. So in this video, we are going to talk about getting started with system-based trading. So uh, you now many people who get started with trading, they mainly start trading because they wanted to create an alternate source of income or they tend to think trading is something where it is easier to make quick money compared to any other professions. But once they start trading, they eventually realize that trading is actually the toughest profession in the entire world. So in spite of having tons of information, in spite of having so much of trading strategies readily available out there, why do still many people find trading as the hardest profession? So what is that no uh, professional traders are doing in a right way and beginner traders are lacking? So you know, that is what we are going to see in a series of videos. So this is not just going to end up with one video. So I'm going to make a you know, continuous series of videos where slowly I'll make you no know, any kind of news based trader into a rule based trader. I'll try to give them a right approach to getting started with the system based trading, starting from the you no know, initial beginner phase, like how do one design a trading system and what are the parameters that one need to look into a trading system and eventually how do we find what is the right trading system for us. So this is going to be you know, a part of series of you know, videos which I'm going to post you know, every single week. So to get started with in this week, in this episode, what we are going to see is how do one focus on creating a trading system? What is the actual foundation that is required? So that is what we are going to address. So let's take any other profession. Let's take, you know, be a doctor or be a surgeon. So in any kind of professions, you cannot be wrong with whatever the work that you are doing. So you know, from our beginner phase, like from our even childhood phase, when we are getting started with from school days, you no, know, people tend to punish us when we do the wrong things. So by default, our human brains are embedded in a nature where we are not supposed to do the wrong thing. We are always supposed to do the right thing. And when you do the right thing, you get rewarded. So by default, we always wanted to be right. So take a, you know, a profession like surgeon where you, know, the, you can't go wrong at all. You, you, need, you, need to have a, you, know, you need to have a right procedure. So you need to follow that procedure. You need to make sure that you are you know, following the right procedure to treat that particular patient. And eventually, if something small goes wrong, even the you no know, patient can die. So there is a you no know, high degree of uh, you no know, being right, which is involved in any kind of professions. So when a guy being a doctor or an engineer or any other profession, so when he is very much you know, successful in his own field and when he comes to trading and when he tries to approach the same process of being right, where he wanted to be right, then that is where the problem starts. So you need to have a totally different mindset when you get started with trading. You, you need not be right at all. You don't need to be right all the time. This is the only profession in the world where you can be wrong and still make money out of it. So as long as you have this mindset of you always wanted to be right, you want to be right with your trading analysis, you want to be right with whatever the analysis that you post, then you will definitely have a tough time with respect to trading. So the first and foremost rule with respect to getting started with system based trading or be it in trading in general is you need to accept that you can be wrong. There is no nothing wrong in being wrong with respect to trading. See, in spite of having so many trading systems out there, if you just go and Google up or if you ask ChatGPT to create a trading system, it's going to give you a trading system. So the creating or finding a trading system is not at all a problem in the current scenario where tons of information is available. Anybody could create a trading system even without any coding knowledge. They can easily backtest with multiple no code platforms, right? So create a trading system or finding any existing trading system out there is a very easy job. So in spite of finding a trading system, still people are not able to trade it. People are not able to make money out of it. It is because mainly because they are not able to find the trading system that is suitable for them. See, consider uh, yeah, if you have read the book, uh, The Market Wizards by Jack Swagger. So he has interviewed, no, it's kind of a book where it's a series of interviews across the top traders in the world across where they have mentioned like what is the approach that these traders eventually follow and how they move from you know, initial phase to how they move to a successful trader. So it's kind of a journey of every single trader. So that is the you no know, compilation of interviews. So if you go through that book, one thing that is common among each of these traders is not everyone follows a similar type of trading strategies. Every single trader who was interviewed out there trade a different instrument, trade a different type of system, someone follows technical analysis, someone follow fundamental analysis, someone follow quantitative system. So it is totally different in nature. But what is very, very common with among all these traders is they were able to figure out what kind of trading system is suitable for them. And eventually they were able to stick to it. And most importantly, every single guy out there who has been interviewed in that book, 
would have given too much importance on low risk ideas like they don't you know focus on okay i wanted to make big in this one single trade no they wanted to follow a consistent approach they wanted to risk as small as possible because they know as long as i was able to survive in the markets i would be able to make profits eventually so the key is to not make profits the key is to survive in the markets so if we have to survive in the markets the first and important goal that you need to follow is risk very less so if you are going to create a trading strategy out there the first and foremost rule is start with a trading system which has a least risk don't go with a system which has a high profit like no end of the year i'm going to make 100% 200% 300% no that doesn't matter how much you are going to risk to make that overall percentage matters so as long as this risk part is very very minimal you would be able to stick to the system and when you are able to stick to the system you eventually become a you no know, disciplined trader and eventually become a successful trader so that is the main key if you observe you no know, if you read that book the market wizards by jack swagger that is the main takeaway what i have felt so coming to this important question of so okay fine you are saying that okay you need to find a system that is suitable for you so how do i know what kind of system is suitable for me so again that is why we say that you no know, being a successful trader or finding the right trading system it's all about finding about yourself so the more you know about yourself it is much easier to create a trading system for you so in spite of having you no know, all those readily available systems and trying to pick any systems out of there first ask yourself what kind of person you are so what kind of person you are you no know, determines what kind of trading strategy is suitable for you for an example if you are a person who's very hyperactive like you always you know go out discuss with people who always interact with people who play a sport who who doesn't like to sit calmly or do something like if you are super hyperactive then you should go for a trading system which is very short term in nature which involves lot of you no know, activities involved in it for an example doing a trading strategy which involves doing multiple analysis and then finally taking a trading decisions out of it or getting in getting out like for an example scalping kind of a systems or very short term trading in nature so these kind of systems would be really suitable for a person who is you no know, hyperactive like who wanted to get engaged in some sort of activities so if you are a person who is very calm in nature who doesn't want to be you know getting involved with multiple things who is able to control your anger so these kind of you know personality if you have then you can go with systems like breakout trading systems or trend following systems because these kind of systems in nature you have to go through lot of small small losses so a person who is really calm and who is able to control his anger and who is you know able to control his mind will be able to you know easily manage these kind of small small losses because he is there he is you know by nature his personality is you know being calm so he will be readily able to wait for that one big trade which is eventually going to come with respect to breakout trading system or trend following system so he doesn't have any issues with taking those small losses over a period of time but if you give this system to the hyperactive guy then he would not be able to stick to it he will be super hyperactive so he always want to control the loss he will try to say okay what kind of tweaking that i could do so the totally the personality with respect to the trading system if it doesn't match that is when the problem starts so that is when the trader starts jumping systems from one system to other system say they tend to jump if you observe most people jump for two reasons one reason is they are not able to make profit out of it that could be because of curve foot system so be, they would have back tested it and you no know, through by you no know, curve footing and then trying to you know, deploy that system in live probably it would have not worked so they would have jumped there are other set of traders where in spite of certain you no know, trading strategies making profit they tend to jump from that system to other system mainly because they are not able to stick to that system they find that system is not suitable for them so that is where you no know, that is the main reason where this you no know, system jumping happens so you need to figure out what kind of personality you are and accordingly start creating trading strategies or start finding trading strategies which is suitable for your personality and then start trading it with a lower capital and eventually see if you are able to stick to it and from then onwards you start focusing on scaling up the capital so the first and foremost thing is find what kind of person you are and then try to adapt you know the trading strategies so that is why now during your initial years don't put so much of capital and start with any kind of trading systems it is always a trial and error you need to find out multiple trading systems like you know as long as if you have not tried scalping at all then you would not know whether scalping is suitable for you or not if you have not tried breakout system at all you would not know what kind of trading systems is really suitable for you so the first and foremost rule is 
try with all these different variations of systems with little little capital you will definitely know which kind of trading system is actually suitable for you so if you are following five different trading rules there is one trading system which you feel is you are more comfortable with so you, you know subconsciously you start allocating more capital towards that kind of strategy so that is the kind of strat no trading strategy which is suitable for you you need to start following that system eventually and discard the rest of the systems going forward you need to keep in mind the one who could master his own mind can master the markets so you no know, mastering the markets or becoming pro at market is not about reading more about markets it is all reading more about ourselves like the more you know about yourself eventually you would be able to master the market and also you no know, being a successful trader one more important point that you need to keep as a foundation is see with respect to trading we don't trade the markets we trade our belief about the markets so you look around your own trading you know, circle friends like every single guy would be talking about one specific thing which he feels very confident about or which he firmly believes in so for an example my friend vishal mehta he firmly believes in rsi so whenever no he tries to create a trading strategy out there or whenever he tries to you know, read about the markets he keeps this rsi in mind because he has a strong belief about this rsi similarly there are other people out there who talk about elliot wave or market profile so every single guy out there have some strong belief with respect to one indicator or one concept and that is also could be a problem when you wanted to explore more about the markets because you have your own belief about the markets so when someone else comes to you and talks to you about okay see this is not going to work probably you need to try this out this is much better than this one then it is very very difficult to come out of their existing mindset and try out the other one because they tend to think okay no this is what it is like if someone who you know strongly believes in technical analysis he will not give a damn about fundamental analysis probably you know he'll bash about fundamental analysis he'll try to prove you why technical analysis is much much better than rest of all the analysis so we tend to you know get into a, you know, a closed shell and we if we don't come out of this shell and we would not be able to explore more about the markets and all so there, it is more about the belief which is going to you know hold you up by you know trying to explore you no know, other things so when you are trying to create trading strategies try to keep a open mind don't so whatever the belief that you have that's fine keep aside and try to explore other stuff try to explore you no know, other parts like what are the things that is because the first initial journey is all about finding that suitable system which is very good for you so when you already have a belief about one specific system or one specific concept you will tend to create a trading strategy out of that belief only so if you are you know so uh, having a high strong belief about market profile you tend to think or you tend to create trading strategies out of or based out of market profile only and if that is not suitable for your mindset then eventually you have to you will discard that and move to something else so when you are trying to create a trading strategy during the foundation part don't have a strong belief about something and don't try to go and create trading strategies out of that belief so this belief is going to you know hold you back in trying to explore all the other things so it's it's better to have a open mindset when you are trying to create a trading system during your initial years and try to explore rest of all the things which you even don't believe in it so probably once you explore probably you will have an idea how it's going to work or whether then you try to discard it after doing all this analysis don't try to discard it during your first interaction with that kind of setup itself so when people ask why system trading so why not discretionary trading see uh, it is not that no system trading going to guarantee you profits or it is going to you no know, help you automate all the trading strategies out there so no if if at all you have to go with the algo trading system trading is the only solution that is why i come to system trading so these all are all fine let me tell you why system trading is better that is a secondary question i'll tell you why discretionary trading is not suitable for me so you try to think in your perspective so why discretionary trading is not suitable for me is mainly because of the tons of informations that we need to process every single day see as a human brain starting from the day you wake up and starting you know the moment you go to sleep even the little little things like what food that i'm going to eat today or you know what are the you no know, or what food i'm going to cook today or what is the shirt that i'm going to wear those little little things all these things are information decision making process so it is you no know, it doesn't come subconsciously there is something that goes in your mind and you need to take a decision out of it and then you process it and then that outcome comes out similarly with respect to trading starting from morning to evening there is tons of information out there if you are a discretionary trader so you tend to read the news you tend to check the medias you tend to you know scan all the stocks 
and if if when specifically if you're trading with markets then you need to deal with ample of stocks you need to deal with ample of informations and by the time you process all this information and take a trading decision over the period of time you you feel this burnout inside you so you feel like okay is this really worth it trying all these things sitting in front of a system from 9 to 3 and trying to make decisions every single time when market moves or when market turns so it when you it burns out then you tend to feel okay this is not worth it probably this is not the right profession for me so the profession is right but the approach is wrong so that is why i thought okay discretionary is something which i am not at all comfortable with because i give so much importance to time and being a discretionary trader it takes away a lot of my time but being systematic is all about being disciplined with the system which i create so during the initial years you might put lot of efforts it's not that no directly it is much easier to create a system if you are you not know, testing 100 systems only 10 systems might be you know worthwhile trying further but the rest of the 90 systems you have to discard it so during your initial years when you are trying to create a system definitely yes you need to put in a lot of effort time and effort but once that is done then you don't need to you know put your decisions out there you don't need to take any decisions out there once the system is done all you have to do is follow that system so it doesn't consume much time so you no know, discretionary trader versus system trader the biggest advantage that i would say is it gives you a freedom it gives you time so that you can explore more and you can try multiple other things outside of your trading life so that is why i don't stick to uh, that is why i don't i'm not a discretionary trader at all so i always avoid discretionary trader because i don't want to keep making decisions throughout the day that is going to burn me out eventually so that is why i move to system trading so if you have to ask yourself are you ready to know being a discretion if you are a discretionary trader ask yourself whether you would be able to do what you are currently doing for 5 years down the line 10 years down the line 15 years down the line so you could be a really a profitable discretionary trader there is nothing wrong in being a discretionary trader but you need to ask yourself whether whatever you are currently doing if you are able to do it for next 15 20 years then fine you can know you don't need you don't even need to consider system trading you can directly do with whatever that is working for you and continue with it as long as that is not going to burn you out and also when we are creating trading systems during our initial years we always tend to give too much importance on entry price even if you check any social media or any forums people always ask is this the right time to enter is this the right time to buy tcs shares is this the right time to buy reliance shares so they always give too much importance with respect to entry so why do we give too much importance to entry not exits is because for an example you do all the analysis you what kind of whatever the analysis or you are comfortable with you do an analysis and that analysis tells you okay go long at this price and then the moment the market comes to that level you are going long and as soon as you go long the market moves in your favor and it is showing you the profits and the mtm no screens so this gives you that sense of being right that sense of being right you no know, thing that comes in your mind tends to makes you feel that you are in control of the market because you you pat on yourself saying that okay see after doing all the analysis i entered here and exactly after i entered here the market starts moving up which means that i am really good with my analysis and and whatever things that i did tells me that i am right so as soon as market moves in your favor you tend to feel that you are controlling the markets so this entry price gives an high that nothing other you no know, push in sizing or exit nothing gives you so much of high but this entry price gives so much of high to all these traders because they tend to feel that they are in control of the markets so that is why most of the traders start spending so much of time in finding that perfect entry so they tend to think okay once i am able to crack this perfect entry i would be you know able to make huge profits in the markets but it is not the entry that is going to make profit it is the exit so you give too much importance to the exit don't give too much importance to the you know entry you can have a mediocre system which is going to give you a random entry but if you have a perfect exit system that tells you okay this is the right time to exit or this is the right parameter you need to follow to get the perfect exit then the actual exit determines your profit so it is not the entry that determines your profit it is the exit so give importance to exit when you are creating a trading system again and that exit should also be in sync with your personality so if you have to ask yourself are you really comfortable in leaving profits on the table so say suppose you start a trade and you see that okay the profits goes from 10000 20000 30000 and eventually by end of the day if it comes back to 10000 then you might start cribbing that you might curse yourself why did i leave so much of profits on the table so if you have that kind of mindset then probably you need to have a trailing stop loss or you need to have a fixed target based systems because you will keep you no know, blaming yourself by leaving profits on the table either you have to accept it 
or you have to have some other exit mechanism to capture not leaving too much profits on the table so probably you need to have you know a trailing systems or a fixed target so that you don't trip when market reverses so this is what you no know, tra- you know you are analyzing your own mindset is all about so when you having these kind of trading strategies out there these exit parameters is directly is in sync with your mindset so when you create a trading system out there which is suitable for you like this then eventually you will be able to stick to it so exit determines your large you know percentage of profits so finalize what kind of exits so play around with multiple exit systems like try out uh, you know fixed target systems try out trailing stop loss or you not know, try uh, time based exits so when you enter into markets and if market doesn't go in your favor in the next 15 minutes exit out of it so these are the multiple things which you can explore with respect to exit based systems like find out this is the ideal way to exit so once you try and explore all these various different exit systems you will eventually know okay this is the right exit methodology for me so instead of you know leaving profits on the table probably i should book certain profits on target one and, and then you know trial something else for the target two some more else for the target two so likewise analyze yourself and see what kind of exit system is suitable for you and then design the trading strategy accordingly and one more you uh, know important thing that we need to discard is asking why for an example if market moved up 1000 points we tend to ask ourselves why this 1000 points move occurred like is there any specific news that is coming out you tend to you know uh, correlate with any events or anything else which is not at all related to the markets but you tend to believe that this is actually related to the markets and that is why this 1000 points movement is occurring so as a trader we don't need to give too much importance about why certain things are happening in the markets you don't need to ask too much about why so once you have the system all we have to do is follow the system so asking why this moved or why you know certain things happen like if the market moved down 1000 points today then every media outlet is going to talk something bad about the markets like something bad about the economy see this is not going well that is not going well because of which market tank 1000 points today but the next day if market rallies 1000 points the same media house will start focusing on things which is going well suddenly they will say okay bad loans percentage is reduced probably economy is on recovery mode they totally change the tone so if you have observed if you have traded live during 2008 and 2009 during the 2008 october to 2009 april you would see such kind of different in media opinion so sometimes market would go down you know 2% 3% next day market would rally 3% 4% so that has happened frequently during this time frame and when you observe or when you relate that with respect to news you will see a lot of you no know, discrepancies so it doesn't really matter so why it is happening the news factors and all these things are not at all relevant with respect to any kind of trading system so you don't need to you no know, spend too much on finding why this has happened so you totally you can ignore that and one more thing is you no know, the people who get started with markets recently like when i started with markets i used to trade with stocks and then i trade with with uh, you no know, futures and then only started with options buying and eventually i started with option selling but now what happens is many traders are getting started with options directly and that too many people start doing options buying because they could see 3 rupees option moving to you know 30 rupees 300 rupees in short span of time during expiry day so they tend to think okay if i could you know all i have to risk is only 3 rupees but the gain is almost 300 rupees so nothing wrong in trying out buying all these options so it is almost like having a you know a lo- buying a lottery ticket mindset so all these people who you know tend to buy all these lottery tickets like for an example if it you no know, announces a million dollar price so they tend to think okay the lottery cost is very very few you know few rupees or few cents so if i'm just spending few cents the reward is so high so what is wrong in buying you no know, lottery ticket every week or every month but they what they don't understand is risk reward is fine you're risking less and reward is you no know, huge but the probability is very very minimal so people totally forget about this probability they always check with this risk to reward ratio so chance of winning a million dollar lottery is 1 in 13 million so that is the odds are totally against you so that is exactly you know what people have the same speculative mind people have with respect to option buying they tend to think okay this 3 rupees option is going to 300 rupees if it goes all i'm risking is only 3 3 rupees but what i'm gaining is 300 rupees so the risk reward ratio is so high so let me buy options and they buy for one expiry they buy for the next expiry they tend to believe that one or the other expiry is going to work but they forgot that the probability is totally against them so the probability of otm options being in the otm itself is much much higher than the probability of otm options becoming an in the money 
So that is very, very less probable event. So people always tend to think this risk to reward ratio is much more important. So don't give too much importance only on the risk to reward ratio. Always focus on the probability also. So that you don't tend to risk you know, irrationally with these kind of option buying setups. Option buying works, that's fine. But with respect to option buying, you can't put all your capital in one trade and recover all your losses in one trade. See, that also has some you no know, position sizing rules and everything in, in built into it. So don't blindly go for option buying because of this risk reward in nature. You decided that okay, you get you wanted to get started with trading systems, you have this mantle for softwares and you no know, backtesting tools and everything. So now what happens is there is you know, another cycle which people get logged into. It is kind of an optimization cycle. What it means is, say suppose you read about some moving average method. Say this is a moving average crossover method. If you know, a 50 moving average and 100 moving crossover happens, then market tends to trend. So this is for an example. Then what you do is you tend to apply this moving average with respect to multiple stocks. Like you apply the same rules in Reliance, TCS, Infosys, multiple you know, shares and you tend to observe what is the overall result. Then you see that, okay, if TCS is giving you 50% profit, Reliance might be giving you 30% profit, Infosys might be giving you 80% profit. So the same parameter, but all these three different stocks is giving different, different results. So now you tend to optimize this parameter of this moving average. So instead of 50 and 100, you tend to see, okay, 48 and 62 with Infosys is giving me the best moving average and 67 and 78 is giving me the best moving average with respect to some other stock. So when you do this optimization, there are certain softwares which if you run it, it is not directly going to tell you what is the best moving average for this specific stock for this specific duration or this specific time duration. So you tend to believe that this is the best parameter for that specific stock. So you start applying the same in live markets. But when you apply in live markets, that's not going to work because this is what curve footing is all about. So when you try to create a trading strategies out there, don't give too much importance to these parameter based systems. You can have parameters, but don't have too much parameters. For an example, moving average, Bollinger Band, super trend. When you try to say, suppose only when all these indicators gives me a buy, I will buy. When all these indicators gives me a sell, I will sell. So when you, you know, try to add these so many parameters into a trading system, then you will try, you will be entering at the top like because once you are waiting for all the confirmation to give you, you know, okay go ahead then it would be too late and once you get all the confirmation to exit then again it will be too late to exit it would the moment would have already happened so don't try to have too much of these indicators or too much of these parameters into a system just have one or two parameters that is fine so that you don't break your system when you go live so instead of blindly following your back test so just okay this uh, the system has given me huge back test results very good results so let me start you know, doing it but even though the back test results is there, even though you've tested for five years and 10 years, if you don't have the conviction in your trading strategy, so the conviction will come only when you understand why this specific trading system is working. So the logic, the core logic behind it. So if it is a trend following in nature, obviously every market, every instrument has to trend at one point of time. But that one point of time might occur in six months once, eight months once, or one year once, you never know. But in order to get that one big move, you have to go through a lot of small small losses that is the nature of trend following system so you need to find out what is the core logic behind any kind of trading system and see if you are having that conviction to stick to the trading system because more than backtest giving importance to the backtest i give so much importance to the market microstructure whether even whenever i created trading strategies out there i first ask okay this is the core logic behind it if tomorrow, if there is any changes that happens in the markets, if market continues to be in a bearish phase, continues to be in a sideways phase or in a bullish phase, will the system work or not? So I try to question multiple things with respect to trading strategy. So as long as I'm convinced, as long as I have the conviction about the logic behind the trading system, I'll stick to it. It is not that conviction in the back test results. It is the conviction with respect to the logic in the trading system, which is more important than the back test results. And also, you know, when you create a trading strategy and it gives you beautiful back test results, don't get excited out of it because during my initial years, I've did this multiple times. Whenever I get you know, very good back test results, I tend to feel much happier. Okay, finally, I cracked the markets. So this is a system which is going to know, give me a huge profit. This is a system which is going to change my life. I have all this thought process in mind when I get these beautiful back test results. But when you get the extraordinary back test results, you don't get excited. Mostly it might be because of some bug or because of some mistake that you would have done. 
So 99.99% you know that's not going to work when you see a beautiful externally backtest results. So don't get excited about you no know, such kind of you know, best backtest results. So when you create a trading strategies and then finally you see all these backtest results and then once you're done with this trading strategies complete thing, start doubting that trading system before deploying it. Start doubting in the system in the sense try to disprove that system why the system might not work so write five reasons for that or try 10 reasons why the system will fail so if you are able to come up with 10 different points then it means that the system might fail but if you are not even able to come up with three or four points then it means that okay the system is robust enough so before trying to tell your friend or someone else why this you know this trading system is best First, tell yourself that this system is worse, this is not going to work, why it's not going to work, ask all these questions and try to see whether that is going to break your system or not. Because this is most, most important than going live, doing forward testing and everything because it, it's going to give you more, even more conviction with respect to your trading strategy. We ask all the worst case scenario, okay, what if in case if the market shuts down, what if in case the market gets locked in lower circuit, what would be the worst case scenario for this trading system, how it would be able to handle. So once you try to break your own trading system, it becomes even more stronger. So that is the key with respect to, you know, systems building. Consider, you know, you are going to a casino. Like you would have observed the scenario in multiple times, like you've been to, if you have been to, you know, casinos like in Goa, you would have seen in multiple tables out there, they'll be losing the first no bet, second bet, third bet. The moment they lose the third bet, then they tend to bet higher on the fourth outcome because they tend to think, okay, back to back three losses I've faced. This fourth bet which I'm going to make is definitely going to be a winning streak because losing streak can't continue. They tend to think, okay, after four loses, definitely it's going to be the fifth one going to be a winner. So they tend to bet more. So if he's betting 100 rupees in each of these outcome every single time, then on the fourth or fifth trade after no continuous losing streaks instead of betting the same 100 rupees you tend to bet 500 rupees or 1000 rupees or even 5000 rupees because you tend to think that this one specific bet is going to recover all my previous losses because now i'm in a losing streak and eventually the winner has to come so they tend to bet big this is the exact problem with respect to system traders as well they'll have all the systems they will find they'll deploy it, everything is fine but with respect to risking in each and every trade they tend to think okay i have faced four continuous losing streaks now the fifth one has to be a winner as per the practice i could see you know probably after i reach this specific drawdown then eventually it is recovering so probably this is the time i need to risk more in this one trade so they firmly believe in this one trade because most people what they tend to think is they would have lost some big money in one trade so they tend to believe that they can also recover all their losses in one trade and because of this gambler's fallacy this is what they call it as gambler's fallacy they tend to predict the outcome of the trading sequence so okay if there are four continuous losing streaks the fifth one has to be a winner or if there are five continuous winning streaks the no, sixth one has to be a loser so when they are on a losing streak, they tend to bet more, they tend to risk more on the next trading outcome, thinking that is going to be a profitable trade so that it is going to recover all their losses. That is the biggest mistake that you could do. Trading outcome is totally random in nature. So you might see a very good, beautiful results, backtest results. Overall, you still can make 30% or 40% as per your backtest results in the live markets. But you can't predict the outcome of trading event, each and every trading event. So okay, if the third trade is profitable trade, so the fifth trade can be a you know, losing trade. No, that is no way you are going to, there is no way you can predict the outcome of any trading event. So don't try to change your position size, don't try to change the risk per trade based on this, your own analysis. Just because you are having four continuous losing streaks, don't think that the fifth trade has to be a winner. It can also be a losing streak. Because if you tend to think that fifth trade has to be a winner after four losing streaks, you tend to bet more, you tend to increase your position size. You tend to, instead of losing, instead of you no know, risking 2%, you might tend to risk 20% there because you tend to think that is going to be a winner definitely for sure. So don't do that. So you would no way we can predict the trading outcome. Trading outcome is completely random in nature. You can't predict the trading outcome sequence. 
so it's if you are risking per trade is two percent stick to the two percent irrespective of the trading outcome that is very very important when you are following any specific trading system so the, these are the very very important foundation part with respect to trading systems or trading and trading system so this is what i wanted to convey so what i'll do is you know in the next episode i try to focus on okay how do we start creating a trading system so how do we proceed with the first layer of foundation so what are the things that we need to ask ourselves so that we'll come up with some list of points and from there how do we go about creating a trading system so that is what we are going to talk about in the next episode so if you guys have any questions please post in the comment section i'll address it thank you